Okay, welcome everyone to Go in 5 Minutes episode 24. Uh, today I got some new software, um, so you can see my face. Uh, I think this is the first time uh, I've actually shown my face on a Go in 5 Minutes episode. So, hello, I'm Aaron. Um, I want to continue the Buffalo Framework series. Uh, this will be number three in the series. Um, and we're going to talk today about Buffalo resources. Uh, so you can see here on the README, um, resources are basically a single database model, which is a struct as we saw previously uh, in the Buffalo framework. Uh, and then on top of that, there are a bunch of HTTP endpoints uh, around it to do create, read, update, and delete. Uh, and then there are a bunch of templates around it as well. So you can do basically one command uh, and you can get everything, all that stuff I just mentioned, including the database model. Um, so I'm going to go over to my iTerm, um, and I'm going to do buffalo generate, if I can type, and we can just see some help text there. Uh, so buffalo generate can do a bunch of stuff, uh, can generate new actions, which we saw before, um, do stuff with Docker, I can do some email stuff. Uh, generate a grift task, uh, which more about that in a future episode. Uh, and obviously, this is what we want, um, Buffalo generate resource. So let's dig into that. And I'm going to clear the screen, make things a little bit bigger here. And there's a bunch of help text that comes out here. Uh, Buffalo generate resource, you pass it a name. Uh, I'm not going to pass any flags here. And you can see here we get, uh, if you passed in users as the name, you get back a user's action, a test for it, a user's model, um, which is the database model, it's a struct, test for the model, and um, that's it. Um, so let's try that out actually. And I'm just gonna call it GIFM for going five minutes and it created all this stuff. So I talked about the templates here. Uh, this is a translation uh, for the templates. Um, it's got these four templates plus a couple partials. So this is to show an, an individual GIFM. Uh, this is to edit one, uh, meaning edit it in the database. This is to show all of them. This is a partial for the edit form and the create form. And then here is the create template that uses the, um, the form for editing. Also, the edit form obviously uses it too. Uh, and then, like we saw before, we've got actions here. Um, that's the, the uh, resource, and we'll see what that looks like in a second. There's the test for it. Uh, and then finally, uh, the go in five minutes model. So uh, let's start with the action and go back into VS Code and see here. Uh, we've got a GIFMs, um, and this struct called GIFMs resource. Um, there's some great comments up here, uh, but basically what this is doing is it's telling us that uh, we are implementing a buffalo dot resource. So we go into that. We can see this is an interface, pretty standard interface. You can see um, basically these are the CRUD: create, read, update, and delete. Um, so here's create. Uh, here's list, list them all, this is read, this is update, uh, and then of course this is delete. And there's a great doc, so I hope if you ever create one, you check out these docs and you see uh, exactly what's going on here. Uh, so going back to the resource, there's all this code that's generated for us, all this stuff. All right, so this is a really powerful tool. Um, and also if we go into app, it's even created for us there. So actually, if we go to uh, our Buffalo server slash GIFMs, uh, we'll see all these endpoints that have been created for us. All right, so let's go down to models now. And we can see here, a new model has been created for us. All right, so really, I didn't say to put anything in the model, um, just basically IDs and the standard timestamps. Um, but all this code also generated for us. Uh, as is this basic test. So if we ever run Buffalo test without filling this in, uh, it'll remind us that, hey, we haven't tested anything. And the same goes for the test for the actions. 
Again, not implemented. All right, so we're going to skip over the test stuff for now. Let's go back to iTerm. I'm going to clear the screen here. And I'm going to do a Buffalo dev. And there we go. We've got it running on port 3000. So let's go over there. Look the host 3000. And there you go. So we've got our basic index path. That's this. It's exact page. But now look at all these other endpoints. Get, GIFMs, that's that index one. Uh, post, this is to create a new one. Get is to return the HTML form to create a new one so you can type in all your stuff. Uh, and then there's the individual ones. Get an individual one, that's the read. Update one, that's the update in CRUD. Uh, delete one, which is actually taking out of the database. Uh, and then get the GIFM ID slash edit is to get back the HTML form uh, to do the editing. All right, so let's check this out. Okay, what's going on here? I didn't run the uh, database migration to get that new GIFMs table. Okay, so let's do that. Let's open up a new tab here. Uh, I believe it's Buffalo DB migrate up. And there you go. So we have now run this migration. And remember, this is one that was created with our Buffalo Generate. All right, so let's check out what does that migration look like? Uh, that's the down migration. Here's the up migration. All right, so there we go. We created the GIFMs table uh, with this ID column. Those other timestamp columns, if you remember, those are gonna be automatically created for us. And now that we have our fully uh, migrated database table, we go back to here, there you go. So now we've got our form. This is the uh, slash GIFMs template, uh, which maps to template slash GIFMs slash index. All right. So here we're looping through everything in the database. There happens to be nothing in the da database, so we're not going to see anything. But let's take that one last step, create a new one. Uh, the form doesn't have anything in it because all it is is an ID and the timestamps, and those are automatically generated for us. But I am going to press save, and now we've got our GIFM with that, that auto-generated UUID. We're going to go back to all of them, and you can see there's nothing here. There's no name, nothing. Uh, but the fact that we've got this row means that we have a new GIFM. Do it one more time. Brand new UUID there. We'll go back to the list endpoint, and there you go. There's two. Now this is proving that you know we did some generated code. We ran the Buffalo DB migrate up to get the new resource, the new database model into the database schema, and uh, now we've got a fully functioning database model that's wired up all the way through to the client to the HTML. So it's really powerful, super, super powerful. Um, and if you're running a Buffalo app, uh, this is by far the fastest way to get up and running. Uh, and it actually even follows the same pattern as Ruby on Rails and so forth. Um, so highly recommend you check this out. If you're just bootstrapping a Buffalo app, this can be uh, save you probably days. It can be kind of the difference between launching something in a weekend versus launching something in like two weeks or something like that. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, there will be plenty of links to all the documentation for this stuff um, uh, in the show notes and on the GitHub repository and so forth. And I really encourage you to check that out. And uh, that's all for today, and we'll talk to you next time. Take care, everybody.